Let's go deeper into the render settings of iRay. First of all, let's go into tone mapping. And by default, this is on. And your exposure value is probably going to be at 13. 13 to 11 is going to be your ideal range for any outdoor scenes. The lower you put this number, the more exposure you're going to be getting. If you're doing an indoor scene, something from five to seven is probably gonna be your best bet. But since this is outdoor, you're gonna see this is going to be way overexposed. So I'm gonna put this at 13. All these other values right here are going to be your fine tuning, but for now, we're just going to control it with our exposure value. So let's go into our environment. And you can see that mine is set to dome only. Dome only means that it's going to be getting all of its lighting cues and reflections from this environment map. By default, this is dome and scene, which means that it's using this environment map and any lights that you have in your scene. I don't have any lights in my scene, but by default, a headlamp is on when you don't have any lights. So you can either go into general and auto headlamp turn to never, which I recommend, or you can just turn this to dome only if you don't want that, that to show up. Let's go over sun and sky only. Sun and sky is going to give you both a time and positionally accurate lighting system. And you can see right here, you can put in the latitude and longitude. By default, this is the DAS headquarters. So this is my latitude and longitude. And at the time of recording, it is 4, 4, 2016 and it is 231 so this is mathematically correct lighting for where I am right now and if you don't really care where and when this scene is then you can just mess around with these settings to get the lighting that you're looking for so let's switch this back to dome only and let's change our environment map your environment map is most likely going to be an HDRI, or High Dynamic Range Image. And what an HDR looks like is something like this. And you can see it looks really warped and fish-eyed, but once this is stitched together, it's going to give you a full spherical view of the environment. So you can click right here and go to Browse, and if you just Google free HDRs, you can find quite a few. So I've downloaded some from the DAS store, so let's go find those. Let's go into Smart Content. In Products View, I'm going to put in HDR. And let's, let's see what's in this one. This one looks pretty cool. Let's double click to apply that one. And you can see that the lights and reflections that the car is getting is being taken from this new HDR. And that's what, the, that's what the image looks like. These can even be JPEGs or PNGs, but an HDR is gonna be more accurate. So you can see as I rotate around, you can see those reflections interacting with the materials on the car. So let's go back and grab something that looks more like an environment. And again, these are not going to be environments where you're going to have geometry. They're just projected images. So when you rotate around your scene, it's not going to stay a perfect one-to-one -one ratio of your car and the scene or whatever you have in there. But you can see that all these lights in the parking lot are being reflected off of your surfaces. And if you can't see this environment, make sure that draw dome is on. But what if I wanted to have the car pointing forward, I could either 
just rotate the car itself or I can find the position I like the car in and then in dome rotation just add 180 to that so that's going to be 240 and that'll spin it around 180 degrees. There you go.